is Fox 5 Morning News. Julie, thank you so much. Swine flu fear is now a problem for members of the U.S. military serving in Iraq as 51 American troops there have been diagnosed with swine flu. We are told they have all recovered from it, though. Still, 71 other service members are in isolation suspected of having the H1N1 virus. Now, back here at home, swine flu vaccine trials start today. The University of Maryland School of Medicine will begin testing the vaccine on a volunteer group made up of young adults and senior citizens. Volunteers will get two doses each, about three weeks apart. The vaccine trials are going on nationwide. The hope is to have a swine flu vaccine ready to go by the fall. For more now on swine flu vaccine and what we could expect as we get closer to the release to the public is Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick of Howard University Hospital. Thanks for joining us this morning. Sir. Let's talk first of all about the vaccine that is the trials are underway today. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about a couple of doses here. Why the need for more than one dose? Well, before we get to that, I think it's important to remind people about the purpose of a vaccine. So the purpose of a vaccine is to prepare the immune system to defend the body when it encounters a new germ like this new virus, this new H1N1 strain. So if you remember when, when children are first vaccinated, they often have to get more than one dose of a vaccine. So they get one dose to show the germ to the body and then they get a booster dose to enhance the immune response. And so it's the same thing because we haven't seen very much. Most people have not seen this strain of the virus. Right, and there are also, at least to some medical experts, recommending that you get a regular flu vaccine as well. Is that necessary along with this H1N1 vaccine? I think it is because the seasonal, the seasonal flu strain is completely different than this new strain. So the new strain, you probably remember from months ago, is an assortment of different different strains of, of flu. So because it's completely different, it's important to protect from seasonal flu. And as you know, it, it, seasonal flu causes a lot more deaths than this swine flu did. What do the researchers look for when they take something like the trials that are going on now, which are gonna happen over the next few weeks? Uh, it's gonna be kind of a quick turnaround if they wanna try to have this out by, I think October was the target mm -hmm. date. Uh, what can they learn in the meantime? What will they look for from the trials to when they'll actually be able to mass produce mm -hmm. this vaccine? They will look for um, the, basically the immune response. They'll look for how robust the response is to the vaccine. They'll look for whether or not people have side effects. Um, things like that. It's generally what you look for when you test any vaccine, but they can do it. Um, they're very skilled at, um, at scaling up virus production in a short amount of time. So I, I think uh, we'll get there. You know, I, I asked you earlier how things were going down at Howard University Hospital, and you said there's always a lot of sick people. That's just the state of the world these days. But are you, are you preparing for more uh, as we get closer to the fall, which is typically when, you know, when an outbreak of this type might occur? Well, remember that the seasonal flu causes a lot more sickness and mm -hmm. critical sickness than, this, than the swine flu vaccine or this new vaccine. So I think when CDC looked to see who was getting sick from this new strain, it was the same groups of people that generally get sick from the seasonal flu. It was young children and it was older people. So even though we may have more people sick from this new strain, we still anticipate the amounts of sickness that we've seen in older people it's, and young people. Right, it's gonna be a busy time. And when we talk about the young people, the, the CDC and, and some of the government leaders were talking last week about some ways to help with the school because we saw in the spring, they would just shut down the entire school if there was one case. I know they're still trying to fine tune how that happens, but is there anything that can be uh, taken out of that as we look forward now? Because you'd hate to see all these schools just shut down because of you know a couple of cases this fall. Right. I think the most important thing is not to panic, um, not to, not to um, unnecessarily close schools or close office buildings because again, the seasonal flu causes just as much or more um, chronic illness and sickness than this new strain. So I think if people would adhere to some of the public health measures that we've talked about before, so if you sneeze or cough, make sure you wash your hands before you shake someone's hand. Um, it's a good time now to start practicing not touching mm -hmm. your face because we often inadvertently touch our faces and that spreads germs that we may have picked up. So washing your hands, um, 
not not touching your face, covering your, your nose or your mouth when you cough and sneeze. We need to do all those very basic things that our mother told us about when we were growing up. Still need to follow the simple advice and keep it all in perspective. That's right. All right, Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick from Howard University Hospital, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Claudia, we'll send it over to you.